I'm really happy to be talking to John Carr. He is involved in the Children's Charities Coalition on Internet Safety. Now, you recently had a battle on um, open Wi-Fi. Could you tell us about that? Sure. Uh, Starbucks, very famous global brand. We discovered that they were providing free access to the internet via Wi-Fi in all of their coffee shops in Britain, which, by the way, I think is great. But what was not so great was to discover that they take no steps to protect their customers, and in particular children, from either gaining access to hardcore porn and ultraviolet images and all that kind of stuff, nor are they taking steps to protect them from being exposed to it by other people who might be in the coffee shop and sitting at the same table or next to them. And we took it up with them. I have to say it was quite a struggle, uh, but in the end, and I think partly it has to be said because of the intervention of the Prime Minister and uh, the government, they saw that that was the right thing to do when they introduced uh, blocking of that type of adult content in all of their shops in the UK. Well, we're going to get more of this, more, more open Wi-Fi, more municipal Wi-Fi. Do you think it's beholden on the provider of that Wi-Fi, the corporation, to have some sort of obligation, responsibility to, to bar that sort of content? This is not about free speech uh, or censorship. This is about a time and a place. It's about common decency. My view is very simple and straightforward. If you are providing Wi-Fi in a public space where children and young people can be expected to be found on a regular basis, so we're not talking about casinos, we're not talking about nightclubs and pubs, we're talking about public spaces where children and young people are going to be found, then you have an obligation to make sure it's as safe as it can be for them. And that they, they, they're not going to be exposed to that kind of stuff, which they don't have the maturity to understand and process or evaluate. So they're at a risk of harm. It's a clear public duty, and I'm very happy to say within the UK, the Prime Minister agrees with us because he's called on all of our Wi-Fi providers to take steps to protect children from that type of content. And it looks like he's won the argument, they're going to do it. And you prefer it to be done on an on unofficial level like that rather than for there to be legislation? Nobody wants legislation if it can be avoided. If, if the industry sees what's the, the right thing to do and does it, who needs a law or a regulation? Once you get civil servants and government ministers involved in these things, it becomes more expensive and more difficult and, and, and tricky at a number of different levels. The great thing about being part of the ITU's Child Online Protection Initiative, which is sort of linked to this point about Wi-Fi, is that because of this network that the ITU has established, uh, we can pass on this learning to groups around the world, because every government's going to have to face this, every country's going to have to face it as Wi-Fi becomes common everywhere. And it's just tremendous, you know, that we've got this type of mechanism available through the ITU. And it'll be reflected in the next draft of the COP's guidance documents that are being worked on now. And those guidance documents, I have to say, you know, I travel around the world all the time involved in this type of work, and people really value them particularly in the developing world, where they look to the UN as a major source of ad advice, a beacon, you know, information about good practice that's very hard to get from anywhere else. And that's interesting. I mean, do you find that the UK is uniquely sensitised on this issue or that actually these debates are going on, el parallel debates are going on elsewhere and you're finding out about it? Mums and dads, teachers in every country that I've ever visited, they all have exactly the same concerns, anxieties, love for their children, they all want to do the right thing. So actually in every country on the planet, people are talking about these issues. And that's another reason why the ITU COP initiative is so valuable, because it's a focal point for these conversations to happen on a global basis and for spreading best practice. So nobody has to reinvent the wheel, nobody has to go through all of the pain that we've had to go through in Britain or that the Germans had to go through or the Americans had to go through, because through these global mechanisms, we can all learn from each other and speed everything up in the interest of our kids. John Carr, thank you very much.